In the last two lectures, we defined some routes for our Angular application. Now in this lecture, let's make these navigation links work. So what we want is, when this home link is clicked, we want to display the view of home page. When this about link is clicked, we want to display the view of about page. When this contact link is clicked, we want to display the view of contact page. And when this courses link is clicked, we want to display the view of courses page. And we are defining these links in the header component. So let's go to header component. Let's scroll up. Here we have this header folder. Let's expand that. And let's go to header component.html. And in there, we are defining these links using this anchor tag. So one way to make these links work is that instead of specifying pound, we can specify the path. So for example, when this home link is clicked, we want to display the view of home component. For that, if I go to app module to our route, you will notice that we have already defined a route for this path home. And when this path is typed in the address bar, the view of home component will be displayed. So what I can do is I can copy this path and here, instead of saying pound, I can specify that path. In the same way, when this about link is clicked, we want to render the view of about component. So when the view of this about component will be rendered, when in the address bar, the path is about. So for that link, let's go ahead and let's specify the href as about. In the same way, for this contact, let's specify the value for hrfs contact and for the courses let's specify the value for hrfs courses with this if we save the changes let's go to the web page and when i click on this home link you see the path is root url slash home and in that case the view of home component has been rendered if i click on this about link you will notice that the path is about and in that case, the view of about component has been rendered. If I click on this contact link, again, you will notice that the path has changed. It is contact. So the URL is root URL slash contact. And for that URL, the view of contact component has been rendered. In the same way, when I go to this courses link, the view of courses component has been rendered. So in this way, now these links are working as expected. But this is not the right approach. The problem with this approach is that when we navigate around here using any of these links, for example, currently I am in the courses page. If I click on this about link, just notice this reload icon. So you would have noticed that that reload icon spinned and the page has been reloaded here. And this simply means that every time we will navigate around in this application using these links, a new request will be sent to the server and it returns us a new page. And since that page is still our Angular application with the route registered on it, it is able to give us the correct route. But this is not the behavior we want because in this way, it is going to restart our application for every navigation. And with that, our whole application state will be lost and it might not be the behavior we want to offer to our user. For example, let me type root URL here. Okay, let me press enter. So now we are in the home page. Let me go ahead and let me open developer console. And here I will go to the network tab. And what I will do is I will refresh the page here. So when I refresh the page, you see when the page loads for the first time, these many files are being downloaded. So style.css is being downloaded. This runtime.js bundle has been downloaded. Polyfill.js bundle has been downloaded. Vendor.js bundle has been downloaded and all other resources which we are using in our application that has been downloaded. Okay, now let me clear this network tab. Now just notice what happens when I navigate around here. So let's say I go to the about page and you will notice that when I have navigated here to the about page, again, those files are being downloaded. So these bundles, the style.css, runtime.js, polyfill.js, vendor.js, main.js and style.js. These are the bundles which is storing the code of our Angular application. So these files should be downloaded only once when the page initially loads for the first time. After that, it should not be downloaded. Instead, the same downloaded file should be used in order to change the view. But since we are using the href attribute here, 
the default behavior is that when we will navigate around it will make a new request to the server and that's why for every request these files will be downloaded again and again and this is not the behavior we want for our angular application so let me close this developer console here and here instead of using this href attribute we are going to use an angular directive called as router link okay and this router link it is an attribute directive so instead of href we are going to use this router link directive with this if we save the changes if we go to the web page now you will notice that when I navigate around this reload icon does not spin so for example if I go to home page you will notice that this reload icon has not spinned if I go to courses page this reload icon has not spinned so now we are not making a new request to the server when we are navigating around and to show you that let me again go ahead and let me open network tab okay and let me go to root URL okay so for the first time all the files will be downloaded here I typed the root URL and I restarted the app so the page has been loaded this is the first load this is the initial load and for the initial load all the files have been downloaded so all the bundles file have been downloaded all the CSS files font files icon files all the images everything has been downloaded when the page initially loads for the first time now let me go ahead and let me clear the network tab here and now when I navigate around for example let's say I go to contact page you will not see all the files being downloaded again instead only that file which is required for that page for example for this courses page this image is required so that image has been downloaded here let me clear the network tab again and let me go to the about page so again for the about page only that file which is required that has been downloaded for this about page this founder image and this background image was required now this background image was already downloaded when we go to about page so that's why it has not been downloaded again but this founder image it was not downloaded earlier so that has been downloaded so only the required files are being downloaded when we are using router link and in this way we are not downloading the complete application file again and again when we are navigating around so we can say that when we use router link to navigate around in our application in that case the application is not restarting every time we navigate around it is not downloading the application code again and again now as i mentioned this router link it is an attribute directive so we can also wrap it within square brackets like this but when we wrap it within square brackets in that case within these double quotes it is expecting a typescript expression so now it will think that this about is a property or a variable but in our case this about is neither a property nor a variable and neither it is a typescript expression here we want to assign this about as a string value to this router link but since we have wrapped it within square brackets like this we cannot assign a string value like this for that what we will have to do is we will have to wrap this string value within single quotes like this and now this value will be treated as a string value so if you save the changes and if we go back to the web page let me close the developer tool here let me go to home page and now let me go to about page so this is also working so the router link it is a directive that binds the HTML element to a route in our example the HTML element is the anchor element and we are binding that anchor element to a route based on the path and when the HTML element on which we have used the router link is clicked it will result in navigation to that route and we have just seen that with an example also as I mentioned this router link directive it is an attribute directive and we can also pass additional parameters to this attribute directive and we will see that in the future lectures of this course so this router link here it will catch the click event on this anchor element and it will prevent the default behavior now the default behavior for the anchor element when it is clicked is to send a request to the server so that default behavior will be prevented by the router link attribute instead it will analyze what we have passed to the router link directive and it checks if we have a matching route with that value in the defined routes so this is how we can navigate from one part of our angular application to another part using router link 
and not HRF. And this is how we should navigate around. Because this approach gives us a better experience and it does not restart the application because of which the application state is also maintained and it is much faster than reloading the page all the time. So if we go back to the web page and when we navigate around, you will not see this reload icon spin because in this case, the page is not reloading. Here, the content of the page is changing dynamically based on the link which we have clicked. And in this way, we have created a single page application.